We're experiencing technical difficulties. Always. My bad. We're getting to the show. Keep your pants on. Okay, we'll try this again. <laughs> Fuck you, Paul, for making me laugh, because I was, like, trying to get this done as fast as possible, and, it, and I just kept getting sidetracked, and then I was listening to that, I had to listen to it four times. thank you for letting me do that, because I've never really done dialogue with myself. Did you do, like, two separate tracks and put yeah. them together? Okay. Allie and I were having a debate about that. Yeah, it was two separate tracks, so I couldn't have done that, because I interrupt them. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what she said, yeah. And now, Dick Cheney, Duck Hunting. What's so basically for the for the anniversary video? He, uh, he did Tony Danza. Instead of just doing Tony Danza, he went, Tony, what are you doing? He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, just sit down and read it. Whoa, whoa, what's it say? And he's like, it's his happy anniversary. And he's like, it's fucking, but it's, but, he, the, but the impression was small and happy, laughing my tall That's great. I love it. And then And then some of this stuff. Like Paul doing the bat repellent spray and the and the Santos thing. That was for the anniversary video. I just kind of just edited it and recycled that. Like, well, I used everything. They borrow or steal, man. Yeah. It's a little bit of steel. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah
what? You guys never done cock puppet, puppet theater? Like, oh, God. <laughs> puppet theater. Oh, yeah. That should be the name of your show. Yeah, it should be. Cock puppet theater. I love that. All right. We, we'll talk later about that. I like that. Um, no, no, no. Um, and then, you know, to with, that, with, with the, Allie, the Allie Springsteen. So, like, with the boss, you, certain things need to be vetted. She's very picky about what pictures I post. Okay. I've, I've gotten letters. You know, I've gotten letters. warnings. Red card, yellow cards for putting up pictures of her without checking first. Uh, and I don't, uh, I don't know. Every, she's always beautiful to me, so I don't notice. But, but she's, but you know, girls get. You yeah, know, yes. You know, girls and me get. You know, with yeah, their, oh, yeah. I'm fat. You know. Yeah. Anyway, so speaking of glory holes, uh, how's your butt doing, Paul? <laughs> nice segue. Uh, let, me, let me dim the lights. <laughs> so in a continuing saga of Paul's health issues, now, now I get enter to enter the colonoscopy. Yeah, so uh, tomorrow I get to uh, take no. some Dulcolax. The colonoscopy will enter you. Yeah, well, I've never been uh, that's sodomized like, by anything bigger than like a goth girl's finger. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, that's hot. But goth girl, goth girl fingers are usually very bony and skinny. Yeah, like a skinny. skeletal <laughs> long. Take um, that, he man. <laughs> that, was a, that was like, I think the second girl that ever blew me put a finger in my ass. And I was like, whoa. And I like yanked it out. Like, you know, I had, that, I had a very awkward conversation with my older sister. And I was like, you know, um, my girlfriend stuck her finger in my butt, and I liked it. I think I'm gay. And my, <laughs> my sister's like, are you fucking kidding me? She's like, they all want their finger in the butt, you know. So it was kind of cool to have an older sister. Oh, I didn't want it on a hot summer day. <laughs> That's the best time to get it. No. Oh. I think there's so no, many no, people. Anyway, is back to, anyway yeah, yeah, we're, we're off track. We're off I got to take a, <laughs> a fecal wow. sample. And uh, I have to shit into this thing that looks like Woody's hat from Toy Story. So before you were carrying around a plastic jug like a homeless person with your pee, and yeah, now it's gonna, now be, it's gonna be my shit. But, <laughs> but the, the caveat is this: I have to shit into this thing and then scoop it into a a thing like a medicine cup, oh. you know, like that past like a red line. And the red line they need is pretty high. They need a lot of my shit. Um, I have I have rubber gloves if you need them. I do. I have them for demos. Do you do you want some rubber gloves? So now you're a shit shoveler for your own health. Yeah, I have to <laughs> shovel my own fecal matter. I picture like one of those like scoopers they use at like you know like the candy shop where they have like the big silver scooper, and you're just happily scooping your shit no. into a container. Here's here's how it goes. There's the camera. There's the plastic I get to, hat. I get to poop into this plastic cowboy hat. <laughs> and then uh, giddy up, partner. <laughs> yeah. Hope you're able. Wow. Oh, sweet. First, the girl handed me this bag, and she just showed me this bag. I'm like, am I supposed to just aim into this? <laughs> and uh, no, 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 you gotta aim into no, no, no. I'll give you the thing. So <laughs> they give me this little. Accoutrement. You nice. see that? It's a little spoon there. It's a real nice. little fucking spoon. That is a tiny it's spoon. It's the tiniest spoon ever. So wait, you stick that up your butt? I'm not going to call you spoon it. man now? You no, guys can't no. see because it's black and white, but it's this red line right here all at the top. So I just have to scoop my poo into yeah, this little... That's going to take a long time with that little spoon there. Spoon I know. Man. They're doing that to fuck with you with that little spoon. Yeah. I would get a big ass Got plastic to shoot in my hand and just throw it out. So uh, does that go on the toilet or are you squatting over that? What's the deal no, with that? I think that goes on the toilet. I hope so. It kind of. I think the flat part is like so that my penis and balls can hang <laughs> over and pee and not contaminate the poo sample with my urine. <laughs> And, and then uh, we'll just sterilize it. But I, I was supposed to do that last <clears throat> week, over this week. I didn't have time. Because uh, who has time to shit? Who has time to play with their own shit? <laughs> so, scat lovers? Now, tomorrow, I have to take some Dulcolax and uh, just shit all day and take this stuff and not eat anything past a certain time, like oh. a fucking gremlin. Oh. And then, uh, yeah, Friday morning, I get to go nice and early. Uh... And they're gonna uh, invade me with a camera. Jeez. I get to be uh, anesthetized, so that's nice. Okay, I know I asked this before with the penis cam, but can I get some of the footage of the <laughs> colonoscopy? I really need the practice editing. You wanna drive me? When is it? 
Friday morning real early? Uh, I'm kind of, I have to drive Allie to her surgery, but I'll ask her if it's okay if I drive you instead. No, purple. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I, yeah, Ali's got her uh, reconstruction Friday. Oh, she's Friday, okay. Yeah, uh, but I would definitely do it, and I was off, but, um, yeah. Is it, it, does it happen to be a Hackensack? Because I could just carpool everybody. No, <laughs> no, no. It's, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, they're going to put the camera in there and see what's uh, going on. I don't know, I'd rather be asleep for it than awake and then shoving it in my pee hole again. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Not a fan. That was really painful, right? But if we could get that footage, we could make a, man, a fantastic video. And the song could be like Bad Hormone. You're looking inside my penis. Oh, my, my week was kind of looking up. Uh, not really. But I speaking of uh, footage, I found a sex tape of myself from, from like 10 years ago. That's always fun. Amongst my files. Roll the clip. No, I can't roll the clip. <laughs> but uh, it was like a... It was like a hilarious thing, like looking at it to me, because before I started smoking weed, and my entire body is covered in psoriasis. Wow. It was like, it would have been the greatest before picture ever, except that I'm doing a girl from behind. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, his, like, he's covered in psoriasis like a monster, but his life doesn't seem that bad. <laughs> You know, having psoriasis, you could have a normal life. Yeah, let's put that footage together, right? Yeah, we should I make, can... like, the best psoriasis commercial ever. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. I mean... Don't yeah. let psoriasis impact your sex life. I don't know, where the fuck were you last week? I was in Toronto, the beautiful city of Toronto, which is like a smaller, cleaner New York. Did you get any of that friendly? fine Canadian pussy? I didn't. I didn't. I was working a trade show like a fucking slave. Which was great, but uh, but it was a cannabis trade show. Yeah. And then before the, I went there, they said, uh, "Don't don't. This is how do you be in an industry and not and, and act like this?" But they said, "You might be handed some edibles or some other things that you could use for your personal use. Do not eat them, but do not refuse them either, or else you might, you know, uh, uh, offend somebody. So you're supposed to accept it and throw it out later." And I'm thinking, "I'm not fucking throwing that shit out later. Fuck you, right?" And then, like, you know, it's like, all right, fine. But, you know, you're, you're on the work hours. You're on the clock. So I figured that, you know, I would uh, maybe off hours go out to a dispensary if they had them there. So I, fi I figured that out. But, uh, but, but uh, it's like, I don't know how you would be in an industry and just sell them stuff. Sooner or later, people are going to find out that they're not very cannabis friendly in this company. Anyway, uh, so uh, the Thursday night I was there, I, I started feverishly looking through my phone, and you can get shit delivered right to your yeah. fucking place, but it's a hundred dollars minimum order. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't want to fucking blow a um, hundred bucks. So I'm like, you know, let me go out to a dispensary. They just opened dispensaries out there. Yeah. I started looking into the fucking laws there. You know, in Ontario, you can smoke a joint right in the fucking street. You can smoke it in a fucking park. Anywhere you can smoke a cigarette, you can smoke a fucking joint. You can smoke pot anywhere. It's fucking Ontario. That's crazy to That's me. That's awesome. That's crazy. Because even in, in the States, like, you know, in, like, Maine, you're not just supposed to fucking bust out a spliff anywhere, like... Here, like you're outside your hotel, you could just be fucking smoking a joint. I mean, Somebody you know could be there with their kids. Of like, bar and I smoke weed. Like, I, I right. don't even give it a second thought. It's like you I'm not do doing it. I wouldn't go the day. Yeah, but I wouldn't go to a playground and just like right. I'm gonna burn one in front well, of you kids. Could go to a yeah, like, read the read the damn room. That's that's the problem. Like we have too right. many people in this world who don't know how to read the room. Now I'm not great at it, but. I know, like, if I see a freaking kid, I'm not going to light up a split and go, yeah, hey, I tell her, gotta get that kid out of here. I'm going to smoke weed. Yeah. Well, let's get your goddamn kids away. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> so I fucking, I find a place finally, and I fucking Uber out there, and it's like a cafe, and I go inside, and it's like they serve coffee in this little hole over here, and then you take a number, and when they call your number, you can go upstairs into the other room. So they call my number, I go upstairs, it's like a long line, there's a guy there. They had very limited things. It wasn't like Washington State. When you went to a dispensary in Washington State, the guy was like, how can I help you, sir? Are you looking for sativa? A hybrid? Yeah, that's that's the Vegas. Pain? Yeah, right? Vegas is like that, too, right? The angel <laughs> just meets you. Is, are you Paul? Like a, a beautiful girl. 
I, I said last week, heaven, man. I said last week the the dispensaries in Vegas employ my two favorite people: mm-hmm. hot girls and cool black guys. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And then I defended us on the show. I okay. said I thought your favorite people to talk to were you know obnoxious. You know, writers and, and fat guys. Oh, yeah. uh, perverted writers and fat guys. Well done. But he said that's a separate, that's a closed group. That's a, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, nobody knows this about place that. This place had a little more limited selection, and then I found out they're actually government subsidized or government run up there. And the government also has a lot of oversight about the weed that's used up there. But people just fucking game the system. Like, they'll use, like, gamma rays. So you can have, like, a warehouse full of shitty weed that's, like, moldy. And they'll hit it with gamma rays and kill all that mold. It'll pass the test and you can sell it. People are still going to the fucking black market up there. Yeah. It's not fucking killing anything. Like, you know, in Washington State, nah, Colorado, yeah, people are using the shots. Does that really happen? Gamma rays, really? That's what this one guy was telling me. I don't know. They use the gamma rays, eh? (laughs) And it turns into Hulk weed. Well, can you imagine a Canadian Hulk? He'd but be he very says, polite. <laughs> he says you get dry, shitty weed there. I bought like nine joints. I bought like nine pre rolls, so I had a joint every night. But it was like 0.7 of a gram, so it was like almost a fucking uh, dime bag in each joint. Yeah. I you fucking took what, two hits. Bucks each for him. I like got out of the, into the fucking street. I took two hits and like. People are walking by, and it's just like a fucking. Everybody's happy, and they're I all nice imagine, and Canadian. I just I'm imagine just angry walking through the streets of Canada. Oh, you can't tell by the way I use my phone. Move it in, no town to town. Yeah, this guy. People are like running around with kids and stuff like that. I'm like trying to hide this joint, walking down the street. I walk for fucking miles. I end up at the base of the fucking CN Tower. It was crazy, man, but it was pretty cool. And did then, you like, did after you the show, people were just smoking out in the fucking street, and cops were just lazily watching on, not doing anything. I'm like, is this real life? Like, is this... I, I remember we used to get chased or fucking busted for yeah, shit. Yeah, it's like, like, you have no reason to be afraid there is nothing they care to do. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It was just unbelievable. And then um, I was at the show, and, like, the two girls that I was with who were complaining every five minutes about everything. I mean, they're still very nice, but they're just kind of high-maintenance chicks and stuff like that. But they're very good what they do. They know what they're doing. They're very good saleswomen. And they also reminded me, you know, you really shouldn't take any product here. Like, we need to be professional. I'm like, who are these fucking 20-year-olds talking to? Right? But the other girl later was like, because the one girl was smoking cigarettes, she's like, she should just smoke weed. Why is she smoking cigarettes? That's the worst thing for you. But this one dude comes over. He's like, he sells like our equipment and they do all kinds of stuff. And he's like a distributor and now. He's like fucking got long hair and shit like that. The other guy's telling me he fucking dabs every morning with our fucking salesman before they fucking do a show and stuff like that. And then this one guy comes in and he's like, uh, do you smoke to the one girl? She's like, no. The other girl's like, no. And he looks at me and I just fucking made a look. And when one girl looked one way, one girl looked the other, because we're just sitting there, you know, it's a fucking trade show. Like, people walk by, but you don't know what you're doing. He just fucking hands me a vape and I just slipped it in my pocket. Cool as a fucking cucumber. None of them saw it. I took this fucker home. It was like a gold little spaceship. It was called uh, London Donovan, and it was fucking uh, Northern Lights. When's the last time you even had Northern Lights? That was like the big thing in the 90s. I what was your favorite weed? I fucking that you smoked had. this shit. That fucker got me rocked. I yeah. was fucking shot out, dude. I was fucking wrecked. It was crazy. They got some good weed up there, but you gotta find it and stuff like that. They got some people that are doing some innovative shit, but. You know, it's like the conservatives always complain, like, oh, you know, if you have too much government regulation, stuff like that is killing the industry. Seems like it really is doing that with the weed industry. Canada's got to step up a little bit. If it ever goes legal in the United States, you know, Canada, you had a chance. You could have got a guy out in the head. And now fucking when America goes, all the brands here are going to fucking just take over the market. They're just going to export it everywhere. Yeah. It's just going to be the Coca-Cola and Nike of fucking weed again. You know what I mean? Who's going to, I mean, the Budweiser of weed. Do you think, like, Philip Morris is going to, like, try to save oh, they're themselves? they're rubbing their fucking hands together. They can't wait for weed to go legal. Yeah. They got all the fucking super I heard they've been, they've been, like, working on it for 20 years. Oh, yeah. Unless there was just urban legends that, like, had heads. Like, Probably longer. I think the first started, some states first started legalizing in the 70s. I mean, it was well, I know Ann Arbor, Michigan always, you know, you get a yeah. ticket for smoking a joint. They were, like, the first one. There was a, a very good uh, Woody Harrelson weed documentary, uh, <laughs> it was funded by Normal. Like, was it Normal? No. 
What's the, I don't know. Normal is the national organization to reform marijuana laws. What was, yeah. your, what was your favorite weed that you had? That I had there? Yeah. I only got those joints and I got that fucking vape. That's what were the joints? Um, they were just the, the house stuff they rolled up. But it oh my god, they have house weed? They kicked oh, my Christ. ass though. That shit did kick my ass. I'll just ass. take the weed off the speed rack. I'll please. tell you, <laughs> I had fucking kosher dog. Yeah. Dude. Kosher dog. Kosher. D A W G. <laughs> the bomb. It's usually Ken Dog, I think, is one of the strange yeah. hero. Kosher dog and, uh,. Kosher Tangy, I think, was the other oh, one. Oh, yeah. And it was, like, fucking... I got some shit here from a dude. White Fire? Fucking Annihilate. White Rhino is the, the favorite yes. weed that I ever smoked. White Rhino. White Rhino. That shit is Whoa. good. Whoa. The white Rhino. It was these big buds with, like, all these, like, white crystals just, like, encapsulating them. And, like, I opened it and there was, like, purple and, like, yellow on oh, my side. I'm like... Right? I just, it's like, you know, like, like weed isn't as, I don't know, I guess for you guys it is, but like it just doesn't look as pretty as it used to, because I used to date this chick whose brother was a stockbroker, he lived like uptown, so we'd go to his apartment, we lived in Fairlawn, so we'd take the train in, blah, 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 and then we'd go to the apartment at the delivery service, and they'd have like Hawaiian antique wood stuff yeah. in little boxes, like in uh, and it always had like the little crystals, and it's just like, I don't you don't really see that anymore. I see some fucking frosty shit sometimes, dude. Yeah. I get some good ass shit. But I don't know. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Um, I think back then we were getting ripped off with those little boxes because that couldn't have been me. Couldn't have been. Well, you're paying for quality, though, man. I guess. That's the thing. You'll get less if you're paying for quality. I, I think one of the most stressful jobs is, like, you know, 20 years ago, working in New York as one of these weed delivery guys. Like, you get ripped off. You get, you get Nick. There were a couple articles about it in a couple of magazines. Yeah. So it was interesting. Like, they always say, like, don't say shit and the lawyer won't come. Like, they got your back because, you know, it's in their best interests. It happened in Breaking Bad. I mean, that's where Salt, the character Saul came from. Yeah. Because yeah. one of their dealers got necked and had everything on everybody. Um, the consigliere in the old uh, Italian mafia. It's like the right hand man was always a lawyer. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, I don't know. So, did you have a good time? Did you get I to that bar time. that Allie never recommended? I didn't get to that bar. I did wander in a place called uh, 210 Diner, which is a really interesting place. It's like artist run diner and bar okay. and they have performances every night wow i went in there like, like dinner theater like i went in there and i started eating and they had some sort of cabaret upstairs and on the first floor they had a jazz band just set up and played i'm fucking eating meatloaf and french fries and all of a sudden there's a jazz band I'm like this is awesome yeah. and then they got off and then there was like eight comedians they had a whole stand-up comedian thing and uh, the were Raptors good? were playing. Yeah, they were. were, were not they, all of them were, were good, but about. Good? Oh, yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> I would say they were all about, you know. Well, some of them were kind of rough around the edges, but they were all pretty good. There was a lot of, like, shocking humor I didn't expect. Like, this one guy was saying that Montreal should have its own 9 11 because they need more space. I'm like, <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> Wait, I was like, who would have their own 9 He said that uh, uh, Toronto should have its own 9 uh, so they can have more space. Nice. And, uh, yeah, and all kinds of other, you know, he supports shooting. You know what? Sort of park, you know? Here's the thing. 9-11, like, once you get out of this, like, general vicinity and you don't, you're not really affected by it, right. it kind of becomes, like, something like, how long was it before Hulk Hogan was hitting the... The Twin Towers with a chair and big booting the other tower. <laughs> you know, like, do you ever see that meme of Hulk Hogan? No. They just put, like, Hulk Hogan, like, in, like, kicking over the Twin <laughs> Towers and him, like, hitting the other one with a chair. Oh, wow. Like, all crazy shit. Like, how long did that take? Like, yeah. you know, somebody, like, how long was it before I joked about it? Probably too soon. But I mean, I watched it from my front porch. Yeah. I feel like if you go to a lot of other countries that have suffered a lot because of terrorism and stuff like that, it was kind of like, yeah, that's horrible, but you know, yeah, we've had like, seven 9-11s. Yeah, think of like talking about Israel or something. Oh, like, yeah. Shit like, just gets fucking shelled. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, they're trying to take back Israel. Like, you know, oh, yeah, they just blew up fucking buildings. Like, it's fucking Every insane. day there was a car bomb in the early 2000s in Israel. Every fucking day. It's crazy. I cut footage. It was bad, but I know it's not. I 
the Israeli government has done some creepy things to the Palestinians. Oh, yeah. Well, it continues um, to do. And so, like, ugh, it's such a sticky issue. Nobody wants to talk about it. But, like, Fuck. cooler heads need to prevail because there are innocents on both sides that are getting fucked over People just need to chill the fuck out. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. So, but, like, but there's a deal there. Our government and the Israelis torpedoed it. There's, there's the basis of a deal is there, okay? Half of the territory goes to the Palestinians, half goes to the Jews. They split up Jer- Jerusalem. Uh, they recognize Jews, the Jews recognize the Palestinians, and that's it. It's over. So the deal is basically... But Netanyahu's there. way too far to No, the there's... Yeah, because they, they just want to take Israel, and they want to expand their territory there. And they're building all these, uh, you know... Uh, housing complexes in uh, Palestinian territory and stuff like that. They're, they're basically taking illegal territory for the UN. Yeah, I know. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's a big mess. But I feel like I we, were also kind of, we were also kind of naive at the end of the 90s. We were like, oh, the Berlin Wall fell. Everything's going to be well, that fine. A lot, yeah. And then there's like, no, there's five Take yeah. down your pants. <laughs> but, um, all right, so with 9 11, I just, I don't know. What John Stewart did yesterday was really fucking great. Yes. Yeah. And I think instead of having an asshole a week, we should have the hero of the day. Yeah, and you know what? It's one of those things, too. It's so fucking deplorable to be a politician that could make a difference and not show up. That makes you the biggest cunt ever. Right. Yeah. Like every I've been trying all day to get on like a congressional site to see who showed up and who didn't so I can shame the fuck out of them on our show. Um, oh you can probably see that. The thing is that really pisses me off but it doesn't affect my life and I can't let it get me that mad is where the fuck is Hannity? Where the fuck is Rush? They're the first ones to tweet out never forget 9-11 yeah. They don't do shit. When the Zadroga Act was up in 2015, I looked it up on YouTube because, I don't know, I don't know, everybody has a person in, in the hole in their basement, you know, it, it wears a lotion, you know, the person in the hole. I don't fuck. No, 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 I'm just saying, like, I don't know. If Sean Hannity's missing, the police are going to ask me questions. Uh, so, like, when the Zadroga Act was up in 2015, Hannity was on vacation, and like a fucking coward, he had this asshole Dick Morris who used to be in bed with the Clintons, um, call it a sentimental bill, and it doesn't, it, doesn't need, it doesn't need to happen. So Hannity had somebody else take the hard line to see what, to test the waters, and he just, he just stepped away. Hasn't said shit until today. Hasn't said shit. And now he's like taking a victory lap like he supported him. And guys like Hannity could be helping people who are stuck in trailer homes yeah, but, and, and let them know, but it, that doesn't fit his corporate masters. But the point is, Guys like John Stewart that took but a retired comedian shouldn't have to do all this work. But you know what? There's somebody who has Listen, the presidency or could. John Stewart was a comedian, but he wasn't only a comedian. Like, there's a lot of people, and as stupid as it sounds, like, that's kind of where they got their news about Agreed. shit. And, you know, if they, if that's the only form of news they got, that's the only form of news they got. But the fact that he's willing to go and fucking do that is, is important. Like, mm-hmm. Because of that, like people look to him kind of as an authority, you know. Like I always look to him as the voice of reason. Yeah, it's not necessarily always reason. I didn't think, but um, I, 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 he has libertarian views. He's not completely no, I know. Left. I'm, I like John Stewart kind of more now. Like now that he doesn't have a show and just he has really no agenda. He kind of just seems to do the right thing. He, I really he lives him. under Stephen Colbert's desk. I always loved him. Him. I always loved him as an actor. Like I thought he was great in Big Daddy. Mm. He was great in Big Daddy. I loved him in Death to Smoochie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, he he was in this movie with Gillian Anderson and they were like a love interest and every scene looked awkward. It looked um, and uh, Connery was in that movie. It was some Connery? Sean Connery was in the movie. It was like it was like um what? It was this romantic comedy that... Like, a romantic con- Connery? Connery, yeah. <laughs> and it followed, like, three couples in three different stages of life. And, you know, Sean Connery... I, I, I think he was, like, dating this, like, 
Paula Dean like character would have like a cooking show. Oh yeah. my god, Paula Dean, all of her recipes will fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day when Food Network first started, there was a show called Two Fat Ladies, where these two British fat ladies, and everything they made had lard in it. Oh my and god. butter. And they actually had a recipe that had lard and butter. Wow. I ate it and woke up in a hospital two days later. It's crazy. It was worse than the pipe type of yeah. But uh <laughs> <laughs> And that's where snow comes from. The thing is, um, with the with the nine eleven, this has gotta go through Senate. It's gotta get by Mitch and uh I don't know. And if that organization needs money, I, I wanna do a fundraiser for them. Anyway, I walked around the show on Sunday and I got a bunch of uh, swag. So, uh, have some hey. stickers, guys. Oh, thanks, buddy. Top Leaf. These are all like weed companies. We companies give out so the best swag here. Give this to Allie. It's like stickers and pins. Can and I stuff? trade oh, you cool. for your sticker? I want to put that on my guitar. There you go. Top Leaf? It looks like a pot leaf. And this one looks like a police badge. <laughs> and this one looks like fucking. Uh, Fucking uh, the Ramones and shit. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, wow. Here you go, man. That's another one. Thanks, buddy. I got myself a couple of t shirts and uh, notepads. Oh, and oh, you. You, miss. you see that? This is Send us your t shirts. We will wear them. And we're cool. People like us. <laughs> Some people. Not many, though. Most really don't. But they don't know. No, I think saying. we're a treasured uh, group. Like we're, I mean, we're a national treasure. I really, I really treasure my time with all of you, right? Uh, and you guys. Like nice. I, was, I was like annoyed this week. I got to do all this bullshit. My job is annoying me. And <laughs> nah, it's just the usual. But no, nah, at least I get to do this podcast. Like I look forward to doing this and hopefully making the people out there laugh a little bit. Right. Me too. That's always important. Hell yeah. Did you guys see the new Terminator trailer? I, I did, did not. Dude. It looks, looks pretty good. good. Linda Hamilton. She looks pretty rough, she's too. She's back, yeah. She's looking fucking kind of how cool. Much, how involved is Cameron these days? He's producing it, and it's, it's a sequel directed. to Terminator 2. Okay. It looks pretty good. It looks like they're trying, so, they're trying to Terminator 2. I am... Ugh. I gotta watch one of those videos to catch me up on canon. Was the TV uh, yeah. show canon, or did that? No, fuck that TV show. That was a bad idea. It, didn't work it was out. a good looking. Uh, it was a good looking girl though. Yeah, I like the broad in it, but it was like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but it was like one of those things. Uh, you can't adapt. You couldn't adapt the Terminator to television back then. Like, television was kind of, like, in its infancy of, like, becoming great. Like, it was pre-Breaking Bad and stuff like that. And now you have that Superman show, Krypton. I've never watched it. But they show, like, a fucking, what is it, Brainiac and uh, somebody else. Some is, that a, is that a DC? Mobo. Yeah, yeah, it's a DC show. It's about Krypton. And I was like, is it on the streaming? or It's on Sci-Fi Channel, I think. Oh, okay. And, dude... Fucking Lobo is like exactly what I imagine Lobo to be like. They could finally do it for TV now. Awesome. Like I would love to see a Terminator show now on HBO. Right. That show back then was like, ah, it's like how they adapted Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like, which I I like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but I think the movie, like on its own, is just like a cool thing. Right. It, if you like the movie, well, it's, well, yeah. Of the movie was, like, was supposed to be what the show was. Donald, Donald Sutherland is in it and yep. being all fucking weird. Paul Rubens, like it's Paul Rubens stole the show. Dude, yeah. it's a great he movie. Uh, eh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who's a banger? Rucker Hauer? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Like, that's what I mean. It's like a fucking great cast. There was a reason he got cast. Um, who's that writer? Anne Rice. I was going to say the writer that all the goth chicks wanted to bang. Uh, Anne Rice <laughs> wa- was upset when Tom Cruise was cast because she wanted Rucker Howard to be cast as a stat. In the no shit. So it was kind of a gag. We you think you would have cast pulled it off? Rucker Howard as... Yeah. As a list, well, no. In that movie, that would have been a weird movie with yeah. Rucker Howard. He was too old. Yeah. By the time they did an interview. Well, with uh, you know, it would have been like a daddy relationship. <laughs> Yeah, so weird. Because Bad Prey was a little... Was, was Unless a little they cast, like, Walken as, like, the other... Uh, <laughs> like, that would be great. 
That's a totally different movie. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, like, it's a song. You, you blow it. <laughs> Van Helsing. <laughs> Van Helsing is a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm gonna rip off his head and shit down his neck. <laughs> I would watch that movie though. <laughs> um, that would just be some weird energy though. With the two of them? Yeah, it'd be great energy. <laughs> just them, like, fucking... I love My favorite Rucker Hauer movie... We're bringing the show here now. Rucker Hauer. <laughs> um, Blind Fury, which is a remake of a Japanese movie called Zatoichi, which is like a... He's a blind swordsman. Okay. So, do you remember that guy in Ace Ventura that Ace Ventura takes his little dog and he, like, breaks Ace Ventura's fucking rear view mirror off with a bat? Yeah, right. Big burly guy. Uh, Rucker Howe plays this blind swordsman, and that big burly guy comes in and kills Evil Lynn from He Man. <laughs> and she has a kid, Meg Foster, you know, the blue eyes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, she has a kid, so Rucker Howe and this blind guy and this kid have to go, and he, like, protects this kid, getting him to wherever the fuck. Wow. But uh, during the course of the film, Rucker Hauer, as a blind man, drives <laughs> and uh, just murders people with impunity with a, a sword that's, like, trapped in a cane. Like, he, he uh, plays up being a blind guy because he's blind, but, like, he'll fucking just, like, yank out the thing and, like, slash a guy or, like, slash somebody's tires or, like, do something prickish. Like, he's so, he's so awesome in this movie and, like, so super likable. <laughs> And I think they kind of remember it, its existence, dude. It's fucking you gotta you gotta seek it out. It's like of the like the dead heat. You remember that Treat Williams, Joe Piscopo? Oh movie? yeah, that, like, what a piece of shit that yeah, was. But, but it's, it's fun to watch. It's like yeah, it's like a popcorn movie, kind of like that. But Rucker Hauer, like I always wanted to see a sequel to it. You know, like it was like C- Commando too. Same thing. Like I always wanted to see like ah, what happens next. You know, somebody else kidnaps his dumb fucking daughter yeah. and he has to kill him. He has to kill 87 people. <laughs> One guy with a, a fucking saw blade. I told you I'd kill you last. <laughs> Remember when I said I was going to kill you last? I lied. <laughs> I love that movie, man. I love those, those fucking 80s movies. I like, you could put on any one of them. Even if it's not any good, I'll enjoy it. Mm. It's entertaining, that's for sure. Like, like action 80s action movies or 80s movies in general? Well, no, mostly action movies, but like I've I've found shit that's just from the '80s. Like, I like a certain genre, like uh, screwball comedy. Say, there's like a movie called Screwballs and Screwballs Two, and then there's like I Hamburgers, and there's oh, yeah. Arcade, and there's all these weird '80s movies that were made for like nothing, and they're just like some stupid plot of like, oh, this hamburger stand is failing, and these hot girls start working there, and people come by. Yeah, the there's an aphrodisiac in the burger sauce, right? That, I, I saw that. I, I, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I watch these movies. I get all fucking <laughs> fucked up and stoned, and I put them on, and I watch the, probably the first 45 minutes and fall asleep. But the point is, I enjoy them. Like, they make me feel happy and calm. Right. 80s movies, like, I, I've probably watched half of this movie, half of that movie. Uh, but, like... I don't know. I love that shit. There was just a certain thing about those old movies. Like, they don't... Everything's too fast now. You never just see a shot of a guy walking for whatever and, like, a build-up to something. It's all, like, whoosh, whoosh, cut, 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 cut. We're used to... Yeah, I noticed that. Like, uh, every... And it's coming up soon. Every 4th of July weekend, I always rewatch Jaws. There are a lot of long shots of Brody driving yeah, to, yeah. To, to get, you know, to the girl's body. Like, it, it, it goes on. The pacing is so different back then. Oh, yeah. Well, it, and, yeah. Uh, and I noticed it with my own cutting for the opens. Like, when I do the out and about, sometimes, you know, I'll have something. I'm like, eh, that's not necessary. And that's not necessary. Try to get it as fast as possible. Cause, like, you know, I, I think people's the, attention spans are short now. I feel like uh, the yeah. only person who pulls that off now is, like, long shots is, like, Quentin Tarantino. Or like, well, his long shots. There's always things going on, and well, when you say long shot, do you mean like that? Um, uh, that movie. Well, no. Think about I, I you know that, that shot that's really long, and they talk about it and get shorty, but it's from that that movie with uh, the what's Touch of name? Evil. Touch of Evil. That uh, that shot that goes on. Credits over the the fucking 
Yeah, where Orson Welles plays a Mexican guy. And, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 the other guy, uh, Charla Heston plays a Mexican Charla guy. Charla Heston plays a Mexican Orson Welles yeah. just plays like this just yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of crime lord that's yeah, bad. That's right. um, yeah, that's one of those movies that like notoriously gets like brought up for that. Like they, and that's like Orson Welles being like a genius and trying to make you think what a shot and the studio's like, we're putting credits over this. I, I like when the credits are part of or intertwined with the movie. So. I don't know. Like, there's. Do you ever see. Um, what the fuck is that movie where that guy with the He Man haircut walks around with that air gun and just sh- kills people? Anton Shakur. <laughs> no, I don't you know. never saw that? It's like a fucking. Uh, I want you to watch some of the most fucked up movies and you like, look at us like we have ten heads like we've never seen no, it. No, you've definitely oh, seen oh, it. Oh, it's oh, like oh. a reference. It, it's a. Somebody is going to tell me who Anton Shakur is. Uh, I want something I'd fuck with him, I'll tell you that. Anton Shakur. I feel like the 80s movies were kind of freer, and uh, they, they didn't take themselves too seriously. I feel like a lot of movies take themselves very seriously now, even if they're comic book movies. Well, in the 80s, I think seriously. they just tried to portray, like, what would be the coolest thing ever? Like, yeah. Arnold's going to take a saw blade and throw it at a guy's <laughs> head, and it's going <laughs> to chop the top of his skull off, and you see his brain. Like, yes! Yes! <laughs> I just like jerking off a giant Hollywood dick of that was That was when I noticed I still kind of Mal- that, Melissa, Mal- Melissa Milano. Like, that's when I should really started in it. Like, that was actually before Who's the Boss, I think, wasn't it? I don't know. I think, like, I don't know. Um, I'm still but you know who the boss, boss was? <laughs> it was Dewey. They were teaching you to read a book. <laughs> and I feel like in the 80s, there were movies where it was kind of like, you know, the average schmuck could win. You know yeah. what I mean? And now it's always kind of like the chosen one kind of movie. Well, you know, everybody's the chosen one that becomes the hero. You know, it isn't just some schmuck. I mean, besides Lord of the Rings. You want to be a hero? I, I do want to be. I have a story. I saved a baby's life. Uh huh. This week. And you got slapped for it? No. Actually, I was really nervous because I was like, I had to go into the city to use my sixth sense for a guitar. Okay. To help my friend Angelica find a guitar for her. Okay. She wants to like learn to play. So. Cool. I went in, scoped around, found a really cool Martin uh, three quarter size guitar. Okay. She like wants to play something smaller. She travels. Uh-huh. Cool. Um, I was heading back, and I was on the path, and um, a guy's like pushing a stroller. His wife's on the one side, and I, and I could see I'm standing there, and like the fucking uh, the front of the stroller has legs that kind of go like this, and the two front legs are like fucking wedged into the crack between the thing and it's, the doors are like it's you know the doors are gonna close holy shit and I just fucking ran like I flipped out and just ran and yanked up the the thing and like dragged the the thing and the guy followed like I was like bugging out right and uh I told him like I'm sorry you know I just wanted to make sure he's like no man thank you like I yeah. felt like I don't want to ever just grab a stroller you know like right. but like I saw the the panic in the guy's fucking face like right. shit his wife was trying, like, right. she only had one side, so, like, I I did that, but, like, I had, like, my heartbeat, like, fucking elevated, and I was, like, what? bugging out, and I was, like, listening to music, too, like, I didn't stop listening to music. Who would have thought time. the grumpy sound guy at the Clash Bar has a heart? No, I don't want to see a kid get crushed, or worse yet, the fucking door closes and just pulls the stroller down, and then I have to see a kid splattered on a fucking wall. I don't want to see that. Ouch. I'm checking the archives here. Okay, you said, um, we need to thin the herd, and you said, fuck them to children on several occasions. <laughs> But that's like uh, it's all in the uh, cult of contempt archives. That's uh, the duality of man, man. No, but you know what? Like, no, it was cool. On the core, it's it just bugs me out to like, I don't know. I don't want to see any parents like ever stressing out. Like they're trying to get their kid on a fucking path that's train. True, yeah. You know, like there's enough I can't imagine. As it I can't is, imagine yeah. how fucking aggravating that is to be like a camel that's like carrying your kid's big bag of shit that they need, and then your kid's on the train and they need constant attention, like. 
I don't understand that, but like I give them credit for doing that, right? Because I'm not doing that, right? Exactly. Like, that'll never be my life. Under no circumstances will I ever be entertaining children on a subway, right? Right. God, that's like my nightmare. Me too, actually. And and I think it's good that. You know, we're not forced into that anymore. Right. We're not guilted into it by the church. You know? Oh, yeah. By the church? Fuck. By my goddamn parents. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get me to have a kid forever. It's like, mm-hmm. you should be glad I don't have a kid because it would be living with you. <laughs> my sister asked me for like 25 years and then she finally just gave up. Was, really? You guys, you, you don't want to have any regrets. I just, I've never been asked. I want to be a cool uncle. I don't know. You know, it would be that weird or serious uncle. I think they gave up on trying to tell me what to do a long time ago. Because <laughs> they just knew they were going to get disappointed and I was just going to do what I want. And now look at you. And now look at me now. Jedi Knight. Oh, Jedi. Hey, uh, back to the 80s movies. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on like John Hughes films? Love, hate? I love them. I do. They I hate them all. Movies. I knew really? you hate no. them. <laughs> they're, they're good. I like John Hughes. I was going to say. Um, I like Breast- Breakfast Club the least. Okay. And that's the one that everybody's like, you know, quotes. What's your top four? <sighs> now I gotta go pretty in pink because um, what's his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Played yeah, a, a, a good bad guy. D- Andrew Dice Clay is in the movie and actually acts. That's and, a good point. Uh, you know, and what's his face it was Ducky. Yeah, it's not Ford Fairly, but <laughs> were, you, were you Ducky in high school? Ducky, no, I was like fucking, I was like the Fonz in my school. Oh, okay. <laughs> really the so you jumped over rock garbage rock. cans and then a shark. <laughs> nice. Dude, I would do stupid shit in high school. I wore a leather jacket like fucking, like the Terminator. Right. And I would do like dumb shit off the, the bleachers. Like I would do like a fucking flying elbow drop and shit. <laughs> like, I didn't give a fuck. Oh, That's probably why I have problems now walking. <laughs> But like, well, I thought you said that we were talking about um, the Simpsons last week, and you're like, "Oh, I, I liked Bart because he was rude to, you know, authority." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, so you were Bart Simpson's kid?" No, you said not until you're 20. No, well, yeah, because in high school, I mean, I wasn't like at home. I, dude, listen, I never fucked with my parents because a, it just wasn't worth like the fucking aggravation. aggravation. But B, it's like, ah, they have a good point. Like, they're not being unreasonable in their requests. Like, I'm being unreasonable in the deviant, stupid shit that I want to do. Right. And I think would be acceptable behavior for me as a teenage boy. So, like, I, I can re- rationalize this and reason with it. But, I don't know, I just fucking, like, when I was, like, on my own, like, I would call my mom... She's like, make sure you call me every so, you know, every couple hours. Like, I would call her and be like, oh yeah, I, I went, I went out with my friend. She's like, why is the caller ID say Clifton? Where are you? I was like, really? I was at the Load ID MV with like some fucking girl that was way older than me. <laughs> she had to get her, her fucking ID. But my mom told me that the caller ID said Clifton. Which you freaked out, so I was like, "Oh, I went, I went to see a movie. I'm sorry I didn't tell you, you know, and got out of it. Like, hope you're not listening. <laughs> you know, I was kind of doing my own thing. Like, I wasn't always honest with her, but I'm also like, I, I, I always thought, like, I looked around the room and thought to myself, I do it every Wednesday. If these guys turn on me, I can kill them both with my bare hands. Yeah, whatever. Whatever situation I was ever in, it's like." Ah, if this girl decides she wants to like be a cannibal and try and cut me up or something, like I could snap her neck, like right. Steven Seagal. <laughs> you think that's a little bit of a worst case scenario kind of thinking, like a catastrophic no. concept? No, might just have to walk home, you know. Yeah, or whatever. I'd have whatever. to walk home. Big deal, but no, she us. didn't have her license. Her weird fucking friend was driving us. He was the one. If anybody had to worry about it, it was him, Neil. But he was alright. <laughs> drove he a cool was car. Right. Drove a cool car. Showed me typo negative. Right. Didn't question why a fucking thirteen year old is hanging out like a twenty year old. But <laughs> good old Neil. <laughs> yeah, my childhood was awesome. It's just a. It's a wonder that I I'm still alive. Like I think right. of like the, all the crazy shit we did as kids and like. 
the, the crazy psycho people we ran into. Oh, yeah. And I'm still here. Like, I, I have all stories to tell now, you know? Those are the people that would drive you around and buy a beer and stuff. Oh, my God. I used to hang out with these heroin addict girls <laughs> when I was, like, I was a freshman or a sophomore. <laughs> they were just these two, like, smacked out girls. <laughs> and, like... I don't know. We would just... They, they always just were like, hey, you want to drive around? Like, I would drive around with them, and then they would drop me off, and that was it. Like, I would just drive around with them for, like, an hour and bullshit with them. Like, I guess they thought I was amusing. <laughs> These two fucking smacked out dykes. I don't know. That was how I spent some of my afternoons after school. I'd get into this girl's Cadillac. She was, like, 100 fucking pounds, all skinny, driving it. Her partner had like fucking like a, looked like Macaulay Culkin. Yikes! Yeah, and I would, just, I would just sit in the back and like say shit to them while we drove around, and then they would drop me off, and that was it. Sounds riveting. Yeah, they never blew me or anything. It was no. weird. One of them did not off and fucking ram into like a fucking parking meter or something. No, they. I always just went with them to get drugs. I think they needed me like in the car. Like, oh, who are you? Like, oh, I'm just the kid. <laughs> My mom's inside. They decided the store, the heroin store. Jesus. Make sure they didn't fucking. One time, this girl goes, uh, oh, could you take me home from Starbucks? I thought she like lived in town, so I'm like, yeah, like I knew she lived like a couple blocks over. She's like, oh, can we go to this one place? And I hated this girl. I was like really only being nice to her because like I knew she worked with my friends. So we go over to Loop Lounge like and go over that that crack bridge. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the other side, you buy crack. Oh. And uh, <laughs> so like, what the fuck? I'm like, I, I realize I'm like, ah, oh, come on, are you serious? She's like, yeah, just hold on one second. And, like she runs out, meets this guy, like gets some drugs, like gets back in the car. And I was like really bad, you know, because like I just like facilitated a drug deal. Right. Statute of limitations has run out. No, yeah. I don't really care. Ugh, crack is whack, man. Yeah, but I'm just, like, disgusted. It's like, oh, man, all you Starbucks people, you're all a fucking crack. You're trying to sell me a venti. I guess it isn't much of a jump between Starbucks and crack. So, so my buddy, uh, my buddy Dan Galeotto, he was in the Anime, he was in the Aces, and... We all know who Dan Galeotto uh, I'm just saying for the audience. All right, so, he was my... He was my sweet mate, but he was the RA. Uh, and I thought this was strategic because I knew where the authority was. I knew when he had band practice. I knew where he was at all yeah. times, so I could do whatever the fuck I wanted. Right. So it was kind of great. It was kind of like I had a comp. But did he really care? Um, he did. he did in the beginning. He took the RA thing a little seriously. They all do because they all go to some like seminar and they get all riled up about it. Like you got really to like I would just be like, guys, don't be cunts. Like, yeah. Just be. Yeah, but I feel like by second year, year for me, what the fuck? The second year, uh, oh well, anyway, um, well the second year, uh, Terry was my RA and sweet mate, and in the beginning he was like, don't be, don't be smoking, you know, and stuff like that. But then by yeah. the end when he joined the frat, he would like come in, go into our fridge, I'm confiscating this. So we'd always buy cheap beer and put it in the front of the fridge. Nice. So when he comes like in, a dry trap. trap. <laughs> yeah, yes. nice. And uh, but the point was, so Dan bent the rules for this girl Joy. Joy was this sort of hippie girl. Mm. She talked like this. Hi. Oh God. Oh, and I kind of wanted Joy. Um, until she made this Sexually. statement. Sexually. Yes, I totally want her. Cause she, Sexually. She, you know, I did I did coke with her. Uh, she always flirted with me. Well, it's a joy. Uh, I guess it was. It was oh, I, but then um, she, <laughs> she's like, I don't really want to make out. No, wait, what did she say? Well, she told me she didn't want to make out with me um, when I didn't even bring it up. And... Um, <laughs> So I thought that was kind of weird, but I was on drugs at the time, so I don't know. Maybe I said something weird. But then um, maybe she makes this said something. She awesome. made this statement. Yeah, right? I'm telling the story so terrible. You guys, doesn't matter. Anyway, so she goes, "I like Oasis better than the Beatles." And at the oh time, I was God. in my Beatles period. so I stopped talking to her for a little while. Yeah, you know, I just started like hanging her, and then Dan started hanging out with her, and he let her have a cat. But he's like, I'm, he had me try to like 
smell next to people's doors to see who's fucking plant. I'm like, I'm not a freaking drug dog. Screw you. What the fuck, man? So, what he took it tried to make you McGruff. Yeah. <laughs> the crime dog. <laughs> took a boy out of crime. <laughs> oh my god, I got a character I can do for the open. That's awesome. I Thank you, it. internet. Anyway, <laughs> so, the, so they were having this conversation, and Dan's like, yeah, I've never even met anybody that smoked crack. And Joy was like, oh, I smell crack. <laughs> Holy shit. Joy is kind of like... The bass player is 6 8 mathematics meets Adrian, girl Adrian. Wow. That's, a that's what she sounded like to me. One of my friends told me that he had like a, he has like a house, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, he had like fucking crackheads that like moved in. And Have either of you ever smoked crack? Full uh, I smoked bass once, but not exactly I crack. bass once. <laughs> Nice. Oh my god, we gotta cover that. The Frasier, uh, the Kramer song. Uh, what was that show with the Kramer? Oh, so I felt, oh, uh, I was doing uh, White Lines by, um, what the hell was any of that group? I forget. And yet it's kind of something like that. Ohio Grievance. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> oh, it's pretty simple. I just get angry. <laughs> uppers is not my thing. No cocaine, no fuck uppers. uppers. Yeah, fuck uppers. The thing with coke was. It just like, makes you all paranoid and weird. And jittery. Um, and you can have something like, hard on, but you can't come. I can fuck for hours, but I can never come. Yeah, up. I like OD'd at the Clash Bar one time, <laughs> and then really? I woke up, and everyone was looking over me, and Bob is like, should I call an ambulance? I grabbed him like, Bob, <laughs> never call an ambulance. <laughs> You do okay. Do we? Need, we'll talk off there. <laughs> I don't know. When I had, I had a good twenty sixth or twenty fifth birthday. I don't remember which one it was, but I was all cracked out. And uh, I don't know. I literally cracked out. No, no decided to do a line mm-hmm. or two. Okay. And uh, could uh, like was already high. Was already fucking drinking. Was oh, yeah. already mad. Was See, sick. that's the thing. Coke always comes up when you're already fucked up. Yeah, I was yeah, already like, like, like my girlfriend was being a bitch, and like there was this other girl staying at my apartment that just showed up from Queens like oh yeah you said you wanted to hang out and some lady in my building like some lady in my building saw her wandering around and she's like are you lost and she's she's like no I'm looking for my friend she's like oh is your friend Paul oh yeah I remember this uh, and I had this like fucking crazy girl at my apartment I had my girlfriend that was like pissed and uh it was just <laughs> a bad fucking night and like strep throat Oof. That's yeah. The worst. Yeah, it was just a crazy ass night, and then I uh, had my birthday show, and I party a little too hard, as they say, and like I, I was like throwing shit, and I fucking I yelled at people, and like wow. lost my shit, and then like collapsed, like I, it was like fucking nuts, <laughs> and uh, then it's like funny, like I saw like my cousin like took pictures all night. So, like, I saw all his pictures, and, like, you couldn't tell that I had a bad night by any of those pictures. Like, I looked like I was having the best time ever. Oh, man. It leads me to believe maybe there is two personalities within me. Like, the one of them that's, like, real me, and the other one that's, like, I'm sorry, he's a fucking real dick. <laughs> wow. I have that, too, actually. <laughs> well. Fucking cunt. What? <laughs> that's nice to see you. I feel like I have like my nerd side, my metalhead, like rebel side. And they don't always agree with me. Like when that guy handed me the fucking vape pen, I was like, oh yeah. I was like, I do what I want, man. Fuck this shit. Well, the whole time at my trade show, when I was in, in Vegas, I. At the spy convention, yeah, we were spelling, dude. selling our spyware. Double edible, dude. I was fucking just like, I would just look my my boss at the spy shop right in the eye and just like, <laughs> drop fucking <laughs> liquid THC under my tongue, and then just stand there feeling fucking energized as it flowed through my veins. What are you, Hunter Thompson? No, I'm, I'm the Ultimate Warrior, bro. <laughs> So he, he was all against drugs. <laughs> Asshole, that's why he's dead. <laughs> nah, it was a good... I, I love fucking Vegas. Like, you, you go into the, the dispenser, it's like paradise. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, so what can too. we get you? Like, they show you a nice book. You look through it. Like, ah, give me a joint of this and a, <laughs> an eighth of this. And give me some of these 
watermelon fucking uh, yeah. chewies. Oh, and also, give me the liquid THC, too. <laughs> I'll need that for work. <laughs> um, no, and what's fine. fucking great, too, you'll appreciate this. Yeah? I worked nine, nine days in a row at the spy convention. Christ. On, on, uh, on high amounts of... of THC. Right. And I show up to work <laughs> after nine days. Mm -hmm. And my boss says I look like I'm on drugs <laughs> because I didn't brush my hair. <laughs> like I was, you know, like I was probably on more drugs that entire show. The one time you were off drugs, she thinks you're yeah, off I was drugs. like slightly off drugs. You know, it was the morning. Like. Okay, so the year is uh, 1990. The got, year is 1990. I started having sex and I stopped doing homework. I started having sex and I stopped doing homework. This sounds like a song. I have five F's on my report card. My wow. father worked for deluxe check printers and um, they had this seminar, how do you know your kids on drugs? And the list of things I checked off every fucking box. Grades are slipping, rebellious, listens to heavy metal music, wears mostly black. So like, I was totally profiled. So we had this frank discussion life. about, you know, how you're on drugs, I'm worried about you, son, I love you. And I was like, Dad, I swear to God I'm not on drugs. Flash forward, six years later, I'm on the fucking Dean's list, high as a kite. <laughs> and, and before he died, I, I I told him, I was like, you know, I got better grades when I was on drugs, right? And he's like, don't tell your mother. Yeah. We had a, we had a good relationship. My mother and I were like this. My, my father and I were, we were bad. That's good. He was like, he was like a giant Santa Claus Hulk Hogan figure. Wow. Yeah. Ho, 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 brother. <laughs> ho, 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 brother. <laughs> Eat your vitamins. <laughs> Leave me some fucking cookies. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I just found out I'm, I'm going to Vegas in December. Nice. Ali's got a convention, so I got, I got a free bed. I may have to put out... You know, to sleep in the hotel room. Right. But I, I think I can handle that. You can handle that? Yeah. Put out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I think we're staying at, um, oh, what's that dumb one? The marina one. It's on the strip. Trump. No, it's on Mirage? Trump. Mirage? No, um, Mandalay Bay. Oh, uh, yeah. Not, which is like bad. the farthest from where I actually want yeah, to be. Yeah, Mandalay Bay is really far outside, but they do have a lucky roulette, electronic roulette machine. They all have an electronic roulette machine. Well, but this one's lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I won three hundred dollars on a Warren Bandit in the Mirage. Nice. Yeah. The oh. Jade Cat. The Jade Cat. I, I, I don't usually go slots. I, I'll do the video poker. I like roulette. But I like uh, I like sitting down for like three card poker and occasionally jack blackjack. I, I still like your Jack Black. Jack Black. Sit down for him. Yeah. Sit on his but I tell you, I tell you guys the story. Like I saw um, Jack White playing blackjack oh, in Atlantic City. Yeah. And I and I, I, and I made eye contact with him and he, and he made like the fight face. And yeah, I he remember was fucking blackjack. Um, he uh, he beat the crap out of this guy from his band, the Von Bondies, like the yeah, week before. Remember that. And he, the Von Bondis are actually the guy, a good group. Yeah, the Von Bondis are awesome, but he would fight with that guy. He fought him like a couple times. Like, oh, they fought a couple times. Yeah, that was. I remember like, seeing the picture of Rolling Stone where the guy's face was messed up. Yeah, the guy from the Von Bondis. <laughs> and they, if you don't know who the Von Bondis are, they did the the theme to Rescue Me, the the uh, Dennis Leary 9/11 show. It's a good song. Uh, oh, the day. If you don't know who the Von Bondis are, fuck you. They got a girl in the band who harmonizes with them, and uh, she's, she's so more good. than just a whole. <laughs> um, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. But yeah, so like I thought about that, and I just I just kind of walked away, and then I started playing roulette, and I was just like obsessed with him. Because on the ride down, I was like, he's gonna totally be gambling. We're gonna hang out. With him. Um, but I didn't hold the grudge. I mean, you should have fought Jack Black. <laughs> yeah, right. It would have been great. Jack White, not Jack Black. Yeah, no, but you should have <laughs> Jack, Jack, Jack Black. I should have found Jack Black and kicked his ass. Jack Black would have been much friendlier you than know Jack what? White. We're, we weren't gonna have an asshole of the week, but Jack Black is my asshole of the week. He's my asshole of every week. I hate Jack Black. Those two actually met. Uh, recently. They fucking make Jack Gray. <laughs> <laughs> Are we out of time? Or? I'm gonna shit him out. Yeah, let's get the fuck out. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I gotta shit all day tomorrow. 
nice. Do you, you want to come to Rust Hut with me? It'll help. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'm depressed. I just want to sit home and be sad. It's my Tomorrow is my uh, deceased brother's birthday, uh, which is like a shit day for me. Like, I, no matter how hard I try to make it not be, I think I'll write a good song tomorrow while well, between fucking bowel movements. So that would be great. Are you, nice. are you? I heard rumors you might be playing Friday night, or is that not happening? Oh, yeah, no, supposedly, uh, yeah, after my colonoscopy, I'm going to be playing Clash Bar uh, Friday night. Nice. It's 9 o'clock. So, I might have the guys with me, I might not, I don't know. But, I'll show up, I'll be entertaining. I'll show you my clean asshole. Nice. You're gay. <laughs> Who's, does anybody have an asshole in a week besides Jack Black? Uh... Yeah, that Wolf Rider guy wrote that book about Trump and put a bunch of lies in it. What the fuck, dude? What, what the wolf? fuck? He's like a werewolf. It's not Tom Wolf. I can't remember his first name. Oh, Where? Wolf the Witcher? No, 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 no. no. Well, fuck you, Wolf. Yeah. You're an asshole of the week or just a hero of the week? I, it's the hero of the day. I think we should change it. We, we bring more positivity. I think I've heard of the day. We do this show once a week. Oh. All right. Uh, <laughs> I think you're showing your blonde now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That blonde ass pussy show. You know what? Like, it's pretty sweet. Sweet ass um, Jimmy, right? <laughs> I, I'm gonna do one more here. Uh, the uh, okay. the Wallington police right. found the asshole teenagers who threw the smoothie into the stall while I was shitting. Wait, what? And uh, Wait, I, told, I, I never told you this story. I really I told you this story. You were shitting. Tell somebody the story. opened the door and threw a fucking thing. In. I went into the crapper. Yeah. I was looking at my phone. Yeah. The lights went out. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I was wet and my head hurt. <laughs> And uh, I kept running. I finally kept running out, and they go running, and I was covered in smoothie. And and the the store manager's like, "What would you like me to do?" And I'm like, "Something." I was assaulted. And then I texted Allie and I texted Paul, and both of them wrote, "Did you provoke this?" I was nice. like, "No." Nice. That's hilarious. So the, the cameras in the Wallington shop, right, are very good. Nice. So be careful. You so the cops perpetrate us to justice. The cop asked me what he wanted me to do. I could have pressed charges. I did not. I asked for an apology note, and I just wanted them to know what they did was wrong. And I didn't want to fuck up some kid's life. I wasn't going to get blood from a fucking turnout. You should have fucked up that kid's life. Fuck him. For th I thought you guys were going to... I feel like color heads prevail. No, the revenge is that they have to sit in the shitter, and you go in there and throw a frozen dessert on You know what? Listen, I, I can, I, I'm glad that you didn't press charges, because as a kid, I would go to the Woolbrook Mall, and, uh... Or just the mall, not the Woolbrook Mall. It's not get specific. Yeah, right. With like a soda. They're still looking and for And just you. dump like ice down like on a person that's just standing under the thing and like <laughs> fucking just like, run off. Me and from Sussex County, we were at Rockwood Mall. I used to hang out with this metalhead who would like just flick cigarettes off the top. In indiscriminately. When you could smoke at malls? I don't know. Oh, yeah, that was the best. <laughs> Wait, were you around for that? The late, no, you were in the 90s. Kid. Yeah, you could smoke in the mall in the 90s. You yeah, we were like 10. Yeah. If you so, were smoking at 10? If I could get cigarettes. <laughs> if I could get cigarettes, I was smoking at 10. All right, on that My note. My asshole of the week is the cigarette company. Thank you uh, to Lindsay. The, uh, the movie that uh, had John Stewart and Gillian Anderson, now I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Playing by heart. <coughs> On that note, good night. We love y'all. We love y'all. We love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Oh yeah. And don't forget to love each other. I'm Billy D. Williams. <laughs> nice. Not really.